There are no immediate indications of direct North Korean military actions, says Washington's top nuclear envoy. Yet the regime continues to push ahead with its cruise missile launch provocations. We're joined by Frank Danuzzi for more. Welcome back. Good morning. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us. I'd like to start with North Korea's cruise missile launch provocations last week with the latest round staged back on Friday. The question is, why so often? I mean, what's on the North's mind? Well, it seems to me that North Korea has largely turned away from the path of diplomacy. And so they are busily perfecting as much as they can. Uh, they're both uh, ballistic missile technology as well as cruise missile technology. So the repeated tests, which are somewhat normal in the winter training cycle for North Korea, represent a intense desire uh, to have a reliable uh, deterrent, uh, which they can deploy in the face of any South Korean or U.S. provocations. Uh, but I think it also uh, signifies a, a deep level of defiance by the DPRK of the international community's efforts. Uh, to convince the North to abandon the path of nuclear weapons uh, and to re-engage at the bargaining table. So not so much interest in engaging dialogue with the U.S. or South Korea at the moment that you're saying. U.S. nuclear envoy Jung Park said last Friday, like I mentioned earlier, there are no indications of direct North Korean military action. What does this mean? Does it mean that no war is about to break out? Well, 30 years ago, when I was an intelligence officer at the State Department, uh, we engaged in a similar exercise, trying to understand North Korea's potential preparations for, for war. Uh, and it's encouraging, of course, that Jung Pak has indicated that we have no direct evidence that the North is preparing for war. Uh, but it's important to point out uh, that in the case of North Korea, which exists at a high state of military readiness, and a high state of militarization, even in normal times, uh, analysts have a tough time uh, making a judgment about when the North uh, is gearing things up for mm. potential hostilities. Uh, so uh, I think it's really vital for your viewers to appreciate uh, that the Korean Peninsula remains a dangerous place uh, and that North Korea may not be preparing any direct action. Uh, that's, that's encouraging. Uh, but, but it doesn't mean uh, that North Korea has abandoned uh, the path uh, of preparations for a possible conflict on the peninsula. And we have to be ready as well. Definitely. Which is why to counter, uh, better counter North Korean threats, South Korea, the U.S. and Japan on December 19th last year fully activated a system to share info sharing on North Korean missiles in real time. Now, according to Yomiuri Shimbun on Sunday, the three sides apparently failed to follow the North's IRBM launch fired on January 14th. What exactly happened? Well, I don't know, uh, and I wish I did. Uh, but I will point out that any such efforts to use uh, monitoring devices, both uh, uh, in orbit as well as on the peninsula, to assess North Korea's potential ballistic missile activity requires practice and that the coordination between the United States, Japan, and South Korea will take practice uh, to really fully implement uh, the enhanced monitoring and warning uh, systems which the three nations committed to implement uh, at the Camp David summit last summer. So I'm not discouraged that there may have been difficulties in this particular IRBM test launch. Uh, I think that the three allies will work through any difficulties in communication and systems uh, uh, link up uh, in order to enhance their ability to both monitor track and ultimately intercept and defeat uh, uh, DPRK missile launches in the future. Indeed. In the meantime, North Korea has been trying to bring Russia closer to the regime than ever. And it appears that the North is looking to tighten its ties with Beijing, too, on the occasion of their 75th anniversary of diplomatic relations. Is that it? Why is the North working on its ties with Beijing? It's a great question. And basically, North Korea likes to play all sides. So the visit by Foreign Minister Che Song Hui to uh, Moscow to meet with Vladimir Putin uh, last year is now being followed by efforts to strengthen ties to Beijing. Basically, North Korea is trying to extract from their friends as much benefit as possible. They know that China is a little bit jealous 
of the new tighter relations between Pyongyang and Moscow. They ho probably hope that they can extract from Beijing concessions in the form of fuel assistance, food, uh, money, and financial support for the regime. So this is Pyongyang playing one side against the other. Right. But some experts also say China may not be as enthusiastic and even walking on eggshells considering its relations with the U.S. How so? Well, I think that Beijing is trying right now to stabilize U.S.-China relations. And so I'm sure that there is at least some nervousness in Beijing about getting too close to Pyongyang at a time when the United States is insisting upon strict enforcement of sanctions, for instance. On the other hand, China's value to the United States as a potential uh, bargaining partner with the DPRK uh, goes up when China has more uh, uh, regular, reliable communication with Pyongyang. So ironically, uh, if China is able to improve relations a little bit with North Korea, it may uh, enhance the value of China as a potential partner for peace for the United States and South Korean allies uh, to try to stabilize the Korean Peninsula in a year that is frankly shaping up to be one that is full of tension. Definitely. All right. Thanks so much for your insights and your time. We appreciate it. Kamsanida. <laughs>